All right, picking up where I left off as far as establishing this uh, door skin. Uh, we know we want the back of the door to be out an inch and a half from its present location. We also know that we want to uh, make sure that we don't uh, drop the door in the process of moving it out uh, because it would have a tendency to taper down downhill because of the extra width, the fact that it's already heading downhill here. So what I've got here initially is I've got a little pointer hung off one of my body stands and that gives me the height of the top of the quarter panel right there. So I just bring it out in the mid ear here and that would be the top of the back of the door. So in essence what's going to happen is, is this door skin is going to it's going to flatten out a little bit and head towards this point as opposed to heading you know somewhere it's probably about a half inch lower if I just followed that curve off and then down so uh, with that in mind <clears throat> there's a return flange like this on the front and the back that the skin folds around and um, I've already cut uh, this piece off over here uh, part of the problem is as you can see this is curved so adding something to it straight out in this direction is pretty difficult depending on which point you pick to add to as far as making sure that you've got it uh, exactly the distance that you want. So uh, what I went ahead and did was I cut the flange uh, proud over here and then I took a hammer and dolly and I flattened all of this metal out back over here as you can see here. Um, it's not 100% flat, it still has a little bit of curve to it but um, it gives me basically a flat flange to add my next extension piece here to bring the edge of the door out. So with that in mind, <clears throat> I have uh, made this piece up. And you can see it's shrunk in this direction to uh, give me the curvature of the, of the door skin. But it also has to move in, in this direction, top to bottom. It has a curvature in that direction. In addition to that, this um, this angle that is bent at can't be a, a true 90. It starts out as a, out as a 90, but once uh, once I get this shape in and I get close, I have to cut this free at all the joints, and I lay it down on this anvil here, and I give it a little tap on this ridge here to open this gap up a little, so that this comes straight away from the car. But if you're looking at it from top to bottom, you've got a taper that follows the shape of the quarter panel and the tapered shape of the door. So anyway, um, that's where I am right now. The other thing that I have to uh, deal with is making sure that everything lays on there at the correct angle. And what I have here is these pieces of styrofoam. They're just taped. They're an inch and three eighths. Uh, because the flange obviously is going to lay on here and then I have to add the thickness of my sheet metal that will wrap around that flange to get my finish um, surface which will be basically an extra eighth of an inch out from this foam. And the foam is about 10 inches long so that it can be uh, laid right on the surface flat and it projects this surface in to this uh, opening here in the door jam and that allows me to match my angle as far as coming off the quarter panel that's basically right now installed in a stock location and then cut in in addition to that I have to make sure that I maintain spacing uh, over here of a quarter of an inch with my flange which that'll probably have to be tweaked in a final adjustment but uh, that's where I am with that right now and uh, we'll just keep digging All right, after um, manipulating this uh, flange over on the car, make sure that this angle was correct as far as how it laid, laid on the car. Uh, put a piece of aluminum under each one of these places where I split it so that it wouldn't stick to this skin so that I could weld up these slits that I had made in these little areas that I uh, broke it over in order to get it to comply with the proper angle in this direction the wedge shape of the door and the quarter coming together there so um, it's not going to be a hundred percent but it's going to be closer than 
not doing anything at all, that's for sure. All right, that's essentially what I was after. As you can see, bringing this uh, up to this point, minus the skin, we have a, a concave going here, which means that I have to make this flange in one piece from here to here uh, so that I get a smooth transition out to this corner over here that raises everything up to this point here and I can maintain the proper level. One thing I don't really like about working with these quarter panels um, is the fact that, as you can see, if you're, if you're doing this as a, even as a stock uh, situation, you see how it rolls over? It rolls over probably a uh, 3 16 uh, not 3 16 well, about 3 16 of an inch, I'd say, um, of an inch. So that if you're going to, uh, you know, have some nice flat body work going across here and into your door, you're always going to have to mount your door slightly proud of this because this rolls off pretty heavily uh, into this. So if you line your door straight up with your sheet metal, uh, you're going to end up uh, having a little bit of a butt cheek going here in order to, uh, uh, in other words, the door will come straight off and then this is going to roll out so it's going to be heavier. So be building out the edge of your door to try and make up the difference. Um, I've run into that a couple of times, but uh, you end up having to uh, mount the door proud and then you know, filling this up with mud, which that's a little bit susceptible to damage. If this is not a sheet metal edge, you know, uh, to take the punishment, uh, if it's just Bondo, you know, you could hit it just the right way with something hard and knock the Bondo off the corner. Um, sometimes that's all, all you can do, though, um, if you can't get these panels to 100% line up or if it's too late in the process. But uh, anyway, it's something I've run into. I've seen it a bunch. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, welded that all up. Um, so I'm moving to the front now and um, putting this uh, receiver flange on here. Uh, to fold the sheet metal around on the top side of the skin and uh, complying with this uh, radius that I established on this uh, little mock-up pattern over here. Also trying to raise this corner up so that it comes out uh, at the same height as this door is here in order to keep my body line in the right spot here on the door skin. So um, at any rate, that's where I'm at with that. Now I've got to attach a flange one inch out in, in the front. Okay, using the skin, um, I clamp the, uh, the front rim that I made up, shrink and stretch it to the, uh, the shape of the, this curvature here. And also I added an inch and I shrunk it to that uh, shape over there and uh, attached it with clamps to the back side of the skin in order that it would, uh, I could get all my relation points, you know, like up here, make sure I was an inch away up here. Down on the bottom here near the, near the rocker, I made sure that I was an inch away over here. Uh, these uh, body stands are sitting right up uh, tight against the existing lower rim, which I haven't cut away yet for, where this skin has to fold around that lower rim. Uh, so it's attached by clamps on the back side also to the piece that I just put on here. And um, so this is hooked around the side here. So that means that it's, you know, it's good to go in this direction over here. Um, also what I had to do is because this is so much longer at the back, an inch and a half, this corner wanted to kind of be flexible so I just took this um, adjuster, temporarily tacked it to the door, and I wound it in until I had a uniform space up at the top here. And then I just took a piece of quarter inch tubing and I uh, welded a stop in here to hold it from flexing back in this direction. Because when I initially hung this on here, it was tight up in this corner, but down at the bottom it was about a quarter of an inch away, which means that I had to you know, pull it forward a little bit Keeping, trying to keep an eye on everything, making sure that this dies into this point here. Um, now I've got to take the skin back off and finish welding up this rim over here. Then I'll proceed to the, uh, the lower rim. All right, so there it is uh, with the bottom uh, extension welded on. You can see it's uh, an inch and a half bigger at the back uh, and one inch bigger in the front. And that gives me the taper 
on the bottom of my door skin. Anyway, um, so, uh, and I also coated it with some well through primer before I uh, get started fitting up this uh, skin. And uh, before I fit up the skin, I'm going to uh, put the door handle plates in while it's on the bench. That way, if it uh, gives me any problems warping up the metal a little bit, I'll be able to maybe hammer it out and shrink out some of the uh, any distortions that I might get in the panel from welding in the door handle. At any rate, that's what I'm up to next. Now it's time to turn my attention towards uh, putting this uh, door handle into the uh, this door panel right here. And what I've done is I've overcut this thing so that I had some reference lines. Now the Challenger's got a pretty much straight across level body line at the top, whereas this has got a downhill slope. Um, but the leather, there is a level line, and that would be this body line here. So what I'll do is, is I've got a roughly two and three quarters to three inch space from the center top here. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to fold this over on this uh, reference line right here, bend it over so that I have something straight relative to the handle uh, to measure down to this body line over here and then I'll be able to place it. But I'll re be referring to this except instead of the top line because the top line goes downhill and we don't want the handle to look like it's going downhill. Alright, this is what it looks like lined up over here. Um, here's that body line over here so I just measured up to this little brake line eight inches and uh, on both sides and uh, as you can see it takes in the holes that are already cut in the panel for the, the uh, um, period correct door handle over here so this is the perfect spot for it right here um, it won't take in the keyhole there's a keyhole in the panel I have to fill that separately probably um, probably be a partial it's somewhere in this neighborhood over here but I'll be cutting this probably about a half inch away from this perimeter here uh, just to uh, make sure that the shape is um, you know as close to this vertical shape as I can get it that'll help strengthen it to keep it from distorting if I cut it square um, you know and go to weld it then these corners here will probably draw more and um, it'll also be a longer length. The smaller I get this piece here, the less heat I have to apply to the panel because the amount of weld is going to be shorter. So, anyway, that's the theory. All right, so that's the uh, the handle receiver uh, welded in. Uh, that's what it's looking like on the outside. So, at any rate. We're going to go on to uh, trying to attempt to make a median piece for this upper portion over here. Uh, the first thing I have to do though is just to support this because obviously this is not holding its shape. So luckily for me, I've got this old beat up door shell over here that's nicely intact on top. So I'll be able to get the exact uh, shape over here and I'm going to break over a piece of 050 aluminum and uh, create an L channel that I can clamp to both this or that over there I should say and uh, give me something to go to anyway that's what I'm up to now all right this is what I was talking about I got a little L shaped piece of uh, aluminum bent up over here and I've got a Clico through that piece this will create a bed for me to put my intermediate piece on um, I have to do one of these for the door skin now Hopefully that'll hold the shape. So here you can see I've got uh, two surfaces now. I can lay my this patch across here to uh, mend this half and this half back together. So everything's clamped up hard against my uh, profiles on the side over here and here and across the top and then down. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, putting this piece in, which will take me a couple hours just based on the fact that you have to cool every wall down so you don't get a lot of buckling here. 
So after I make one tack, I got to hit it with the air hose, wait for it to cool down, move and skip weld all of these all the way across. And even with that, you end up with some a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm up to right now. Okay, so that was only about three and a half hours of tacking and grinding, but uh, the majority of it is uh, is on now, and uh, so now I've got to take it off and finish up the ends, and um, basically try to grind the backside a little bit, and uh, maybe get this hammered out a little bit better than than this. But it's uh, not too bad already. There's not a, a lot of big whoppy jaw, you know gullies in it or anything like that which is the, pretty much the aim um, you know naturally this being this far away it's a little bit faceted here it goes down a little bit and up here hopefully I can hammer that up a little bit get that a little closer to what it's got to be in the end result but basically what we're doing is you got a kind of a serpentine shape here we're trying to match up then up over across and then hard down and so what we've got here is we've got it's it's a uh, down and then it starts down a little bit right here so this has to be hammered up a little bit and then this begin being the curve it's also down in a little uh, curve here so this all has to hopefully this will all hopefully hammer up just to pick uh, a bit and uh, get it close to this final shape here <clears throat> it's going to be a real bear doing this one I can tell you that much because this is a wider piece of metal it's got to go in here and in the end result well I'm I'll be able to hammer up the inner piece once the outer piece goes on. Whatever I have on this edge is going to have to be, unfortunately, it's going to have to be uh, fixed with uh, some Bondo. But anyway, um, that's uh, that's just the nature of the beast. But uh, we'll uh, we'll keep moving on here. Incidentally, this is. Uh, uh, something I've probably showed you before. This is pretty expensive stuff, but it uh, comes on a roll. It's uh, it's a spark arrestor paper, and it's invaluable if you don't want things. If you're going to be concentrating on something like this, and you're focused on, you know, your spot welds and everything, you're not really concentrating on where your sparks are uh, jumping to. You certainly don't want them to jump into the car or up onto your glass or anything like that. So uh, it's a good investment. It's uh, probably about a hundred dollars for a roll of this stuff, but it's uh, valuable in a situation like this where you've already got work done and you want to protect that area and that's exactly what I'm doing. The last little bit I had to do before I could take this uh, back off was to uh, create the skin for this uh, redesigned nosing here and since this is 045 which is a uh, 18 gauge um, it's uh, gonna be really hard to bend this over on the bottom side of this so what I had to do along once I uh, bent this edge over and shrunk and stretched it to get it back flat again I went ahead and I put some slits in the bottom here so that the only thing I'm going to be uh, bending over is about a half inch three-eighths of material at a time so uh, just thought I'd show you that but anyway um, this will all have to be welded up off the car um, and uh, we'll go on from here And I probably showed you this uh, on some other videos, but this is just something simple that really helps a lot as far as handling door skins or doors. Um, and it's just basically a simple cradle where I took a profile off the door at a set distance, breaking the door up into like basically two thirds. And uh, just made out of some uh, lumber and uh, a little bit of uh, little carpet glued on there. It just helps to keep it from scooting around and uh, getting damaged when you're working on it upside down. All right, with the uh, panel off the car <clears throat> and upside down here on the bench, I was able to go through and check for pinholes and do some counter welding where there were some spots where you could see where I didn't get a good penetration from the top side. So um, anyway, took care of some of those holes for the old rear view mirror and uh, just generally looked it over and uh, got it all smoothed out. Anyway, on to the next step. Before I put the skin back on for the last time, I went ahead and uh, I primed the back side with a little self-etching gray primer and um, put this uh, sound deadener on. 
so I don't have to try and work around all of that stuff to get the sound deadening in the door. Anyway, that's what I'm up to next, putting it on the car. Okay, so this is what it looks like um, with the skin put back on the, the door subframe. Um, that's what that looks like. It's not too bad. It's pretty decent as far as flatness, a little bit of swipe of mud there. You should be able to smarten that up just a little bit. Anyway, so door handles in. Um, anyway. You can see it's an inch and a half out from the quarter panel. The quarter panel is going to be a real job, um, mainly, mainly because it's going to be so unwieldy uh, once I cut it away from here. I've been thinking about that for a while and uh, haven't come up with any good solutions for handling that. But at any rate, as you can see, this blends into the armature for the front fender. And you can see how far out the quarter panel will eventually be. Kind of looks like it's a little offset now, but you can see that the inner the inner piece lines up right here. So uh, at any rate, that is what it's looking like at this point. Um, started to uh, work on the other side skin. This one's a little rougher. Looks like some hokey repairs were made at one point where they try to fill up a rust hole with uh, just a bunch of weld. So it's all gotta be cut out there. And I just ran this through the power hammer. Looks like a bunch of dents that were in the, the bottom here. Um, and I'm just getting ready to put this patch in. It was another cobbled up mess going on here. Here's a patch that they put in. Um, so I had to cut that out. And uh, at any rate, so it's going to be a, a rinse and repeat as they say for the other side so this took me about four days to do so uh hopefully uh and this will end up taking at least uh hopefully just at least that much so by the end of next week hopefully i'll have this other door on we'll see how that goes um anyway uh, i'd like to thank everybody for watching and um i will see you on the next one